How does a diabetic live to be 96 years old? Does the amount of food we eat determine insulin levels? And why is my blood sugar rising in the morning when I haven't even eaten anything? My thoughts about these things coming up. Well, hi folks, and welcome to Comments Day, where we will look at the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the interesting. I'll be sharing some of the comments and questions, and maybe even a complaint or two, and uh, just responding to them a little bit. I, I need to remind you, I'm not a doctor. I will never comment or advise on your specific situation, so don't even ask me. When someone says something like, what do I do? When I see that word, I... Uh, I leave it alone, and I, I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. I wouldn't even do it if I was a doctor, let alone the fact that I'm not a doctor, so don't ask me what you should do. But I can speak in general terms about diabetes, about nutrition, and so forth. Now, I want to start with uh, one of my all-time favorite comments that was left uh, under one of my videos. I don't even remember which one, but I just when I read this, I loved it. I saved it, put it on my computer. I've had it there for several weeks, wanting to share it. So here it is. This person writes, my grandmother, who was diabetic, ate hamburger patties and green beans or fried chicken and green beans every day to control her diabetes. She took no drugs, no insulin, and lived to be 96 years old. And then he adds, I forgot to mention, she fried all her food in lard or bacon drippings. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I love it. Grandma had enough sense to know that carbs were not her friends when it came to raising blood sugar. So she had a very – this was before low-carb was cool, before anyone ever heard of keto. I mean, I don't know how long ago this was, but it sounds like it's been quite a few years ago. But grandma was smart enough to know that she needed to stick with the two basics, meat and low-carb veggies, or in her case, one <laughs> low-carb veggie, which was green beans. And, you know, I think sometimes we are so eager to have variety in our meals that we mess ourselves up because we just want to have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And before long, we're adding some iffy foods or some dangerous foods or some high carb foods instead of sticking with the tried and true and safe foods we know are going to work for us. Grandma knew two things. Fried chicken was OK for her. Hamburger patties were okay for her. And oh, yeah, low-carb veggies are, in her case, one low-carb veggie, green beans. Now, it didn't have to be low-carb. Uh, it didn't have to be green beans. It could have been broccoli. It could have been asparagus. It could have been cauliflower. Any number of veggies that would have worked. It didn't have to just be hamburger patties or fried chicken. It could have been fish. Uh, it, there's a lot of different things that could have worked. Some people will write and ask, what do I eat? Or what do you eat? They'll want to know what I eat. Well, one of the safest and the simplest meals that are not, it is not going to do much to your blood sugar is simply to have some meat, whatever you like, as long as it's not breaded or has a high bread coating. Now, I know fried chicken does have some bread coating, but apparently this worked for grandma. And then have some low-carb veggies. And you've got yourself a meal and it's not going to affect blood sugar too much. Of course, you test yourself and see. But I just, I just love this. And Grandma lived to be 96 years old. She got what she wanted. She wanted a long, healthy life. She got it by eating her. You can just see little Grandma sitting at her dinner table with her hamburger and her green beans. <laughs> or next night, her chicken and her green beans. And uh, living to a ripe old age. Well, that is cool, cool, cool. All right, here's another question. Dennis, I was wondering if the amount of food played a part. <clears throat> excuse me. I was wondering if the amount of food played a part in insulin levels. For example, if you ate half a potato compared to a whole potato, would you have a smaller rise in insulin? The answer is yeah, you, you almost always would because your pancreas is not dumb. It knows when you're sending a lot of carbs down into the stomach and figures out it's got to use more insulin. And if there's less carbs, less insulin. So if you eat a whole potato, it's going to cause a lot more insulin rise. Your pancreas is going to try to keep up. God made your pancreas smart. It knows what, it, uh, what you're doing. 
and it knows when it needs to use more insulin or less insulin. The problem is if you're insulin resistant, uh, it just can't keep up and it's in a losing battle and uh, eventually you could blow it out. This person writes, uh, when I checked myself at 2 a.m., my blood sugar was at 115. By 6 a.m., it was at 130. I didn't eat anything. Why do you think it went up? Well, that is a very common thing, and it's called the Dawn Effect. At least in most people's cases, that's what it would be. And uh, there is something about the morning as it progresses that for many diabetics, even if you don't eat a single solitary thing, your blood sugar will go up. In fact, strange as it may seem, sometimes the best way to get your blood sugar back down a bit is to eat something. <laughs> I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. And I've had cases in my own experience where I would wake up and by the time it was breakfast, I'd be at a 105, 108, 109. I'd eat a low-carb breakfast and about an hour afterwards, I'd be at 94, 95. Uh, go figure. But it's like your pancreas has gone to sleep and blood sugar is rising slightly. And then you eat something and the pancreas goes, oh, time to wake up, time to swing into action. Shoots out a little bit of insulin, everything comes down. So uh, one thing you can say, I can say to you is that if you're seeing a, a blood sugar rise in the morning uh, from when you first get up till you eat a later breakfast or maybe you get up and test yourself in the wee hours of the morning and then by seven it's higher still, don't think you're a freak. <laughs> don't think that's uncommon or that that is very strange. That is very normal. In fact, it's probably more often the case than not. So this is not strange. However, the more you get your blood sugar in line, the, typically the less Dawn effect you'll have. You'll probably always have some, but you'll have less of it than you would if your blood sugar is just going crazy. All right, here's someone that says, uh, it's true. I think they watched one of my videos about uh, blood sugar, uh, fruit raising blood sugar. So this person writes, it's true. I had fruit yesterday and my number was 189. I didn't have fruit today, and it was 122. <laughs> I like that. It's true. It's true. Yeah, it is true. How do I know that? Well, I've tested myself enough to know it is true for me and for many. And, uh, you know, you can run a test yourself. Yeah, we do have some people that are not diabetics, and they watch one of these videos about fruit raising blood sugar, and then they decide to test themselves, and they say, oh, he's a big liar. I tested myself two hours later, and it was hardly any different than it was before I had my apple and my orange and my mango. Well, if you're not diabetic, your pancreas is going to handle it pretty well. Your insulin will handle it pretty well. If you are, that's a different story. Uh, one of the biggest shocks in all my testing was when my wife, Benedict, and I tested ourselves on blueberry muffins. And because I have problems that she doesn't, I gave her the biggest one. So she had two big whopping 55 grams a piece uh, of carbs, blueberry muffins, big old monsters. I had big ones too, but mine weren't quite so big. So she ate her two blueberry muffins, total carbs, 110 grams. And an hour after finishing, her blood sugar had risen from like 97 to, 90, to 99, a scrawny two points. <laughs> Can you believe that? So, but she's not diabetic and she doesn't have insulin resistance. At least if she does, it sure didn't show then. So yeah, it, it doesn't work that way for everybody. But for diabetics, fruit can be a problem. Uh, Dr. Richard Bernstein talks about how he hasn't eaten fruit in decades uh, because he's tested himself again and again and again and again and again. And over and over, he found that fruit raises blood sugar. And he's like, why bother? There's other ways to get nutrition besides fruit. So, and that's exactly what I found. Now, the berries usually don't do much. So I enjoy strawberries. I enjoy blueberries. But uh, the higher sugar fruits can be a real problem. One person who listened to the video, uh, the interview about uh, with Zach Lemus, who was the auto engineer, and he got his blood sugar from like, I think it was around 7 to 4.9. So they wrote 4.9 is a dangerous level for diabetics. Well, my response would be it could be dangerous if you try to get there the wrong way. If your idea of getting down into the fours is to just eat anything you like, high-carb meals, and then just inject 
insulin by the boatload into your body, yeah, that could be very dangerous. But if you get to that place by diet and by losing weight and by exercise and doing all the right things, there's nothing wrong with blood sugar in uh, or A1Cs in the fours. In fact, that's very desirable. Dr. Richard Bernstein has been around 4.3 for decades, and he's a type 1 diabetic. But he gets there the right way, and that is he eats a very low-carb uh, meals for his, uh, throughout his day. Six grams for breakfast, 12 grams of carbs for lunch, 12 for supper, and bam, that's it, 30 grams total. And he knows exactly how much insulin to give himself when he has those six grams or 12. And he's a type 1 diabetic, so he has to give himself insulin, but he knows just how much to give it. And he's been living that way, and he's been staying healthy and functioning beautifully, and he's now in his 80s. So there's nothing wrong with a 4.9. If somebody tells you, oh, that's dangerous, well, yeah, if you're getting there by injecting all kinds of insulin and eating ice cream and candy and all kinds of sugary stuff and then just jamming insulin into your body, that could be dangerous. But if you're eating low carb, there's no reason why diabetics can be in the at least upper fours, if not mid fours or lower fours. So, uh, you know, talk to your doctor. I'm not going to tell you what to aim for. If you want to be content with uh, A1C at 6.5, that's your business. I can only tell you what <laughs> what I, the way I do it, and and we can share testimonies and interviews with people who have uh, done so much better than just to be satisfied with a, a 7.0 or a 6.8 as an A1C. But that's your individual goal and, and choice. Your tar you decide your target. I'm just providing some information. Well, uh, I got a lot more questions, but we're going to have to bring it to an end. We'll try to do this some more sometimes. The comments I find fascinating, and there's just so many interesting testimonies. I love to read those, but also a lot of valid, legitimate questions. And then there's those nasty folks that write the nasty stuff, and they get deleted or sometimes blocked where they can never say another word on my channel. So I'm not afraid to use that. I block people freely if they need it. And I delete comments freely if they need it, but I am thrilled to hear good reports or if people have legitimate, sincere questions. Uh, I'm happy to answer as long as we're just talking generalities. I will not tell you how to live your life, how to eat your food, how to uh, do your thing in trying to solve your diabetes. I won't get specific with you, so don't even ask, but I will try to help as much as I can. Hope you enjoyed this and found it helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up. And consider subscribing and then clicking that bell icon. That way you'll be notified every time we post a new video. And it's it, just keeping up with our videos, I think, can be helpful. God bless. See you again soon.